Here is a small bonus lesson concerning the jog shuttle that we have just seen in the previous lesson. And here I'd like to show how you can change the configuration of the jog shuttle yourself so that commonly used functions are directly available to you over the jog shuttle. I've connected the jog shuttle to my computer and it's been installed. And now I'd like to call up the configuration window. So I'll move my display. And here on the right side of the taskbar, I can see this section concerning the programs that are running in the background. And here, as long as my jog shuttle has been installed correctly, I can open the control panel with my mouse button. In this, I can see a schematic diagram of the keys that are available to me. And if I press a key on my jog shuttle, I can check if the relevant button lights up here. And so this is the case. And so it's working. And now I'll move back to EDIUS, as that's what we are concerned with. I'll configure the jog shuttle for EDIUS. And so in our case, I want to change the settings to those specified for EDIUS. And if we go into the drop down list, down here we find the setting Canopius EDIUS. And this is the setting I need. And now we can see that under Computer Response, there are certain commands specified. For example, here we can see that the space bar is activated by the middle button. We can test this to see if it works. And to do this, I can go down to EDIUS, and as we know, the space bar usually performs the function of start and stop, or play and pause. And so, when I press on the space bar, EDIUS plays, and when I press again, it pauses. But with this keystroke assignment, I can use this button to perform the same task. And yes, it's working as it should do. And now I can start configuring the jog shuttle with my own commands. And the first ones I'd like to configure are these two black buttons to the left and to the right of the shuttle wheel. By clicking on the first button to the left, I can see that it is specified to set the in point using the I key. And the button to the right of the jog wheel is specified for the keystroke O, which is set out point. And I'd actually like to have that the left button moves the cursor in the timeline to the next edit to the left. And I can remember that the key to change that was A. To change this, I select the button on my jog shuttle, then I go to the assignment, and then I press the A key. And now it's specified that the left button will jump to the previous edit point in the timeline. I can also apply a commentary so I know what function is assigned to this key. And I'll simply call it left and then apply. It's important I don't close, otherwise the window closes. And I have to open everything once again from within the application. Now I'll press the right button and then go to keystroke and specify S which will jump to the next edit to the right. And then down in comment, I'll type in right. And once again, I'll apply. Of course, I could carry on assigning all the different buttons, different functions. But this makes sense when you are more confident with the program and know which functions you use most. I'll exit from here once more and try these functions out to check that they do work. And so with the black key to the left, Yes, I can jump to the edit point to the left. And with the right hand black key, I can move to the next edit point to the right. And so that's just a tip concerning the jog shuttle. As we have just seen, we can reconfigure the jog shuttle and we can reconfigure it for every program we use. And so in various other programs, for example, if you have an audio editing software, you can have the desired functions easily accessible to you.